now we're going to do a slightly different topic okay so what we're interested in is the following and so as this object is rotating about this axis uh, this is moving so it has kinetic energy and we saw that uh, the kinetic energy for a particle moving was one half v square and we're going to use that formula and apply it to this rotational object the only problem is see the further away you are from the axis the faster you move okay so that's what this formula does what it does is takes this object breaks it into little pieces that's the kinetic energy of this little piece and the kinetic energy of the entire object is just the sum of kinetic energies of all the little objects now you saw that v i the speed of that guy is r time how far he is from the axis of rotation times omega omega is the same for all the objects omega is angular velocity which is the same okay so v i is r i omega okay. and if you expand this omega comes out that's constant that's the same for everybody half is the same for everybody okay so then you're left with this term that is m i the mass of this little piece times its distance from the axis of rotation okay and if you sum over every particle for this object so you break and broken this object into a million little pieces for each piece take its mass and measure its distance from the axis of rotation take the square of that and take the sum of that that guy is what is called moment of inertia okay so the moment of inertia of an object is m i r i square okay so the moment of inertia of an object depends on the mass but it depends on how the mass is distributed about the axis so you take the same object and spread it out so for instance imagine a pizza as a pizza as you as you the pizza get bigger and bigger or thinner and thinner the mass is going further away and its moment of inertia is increasing even though the total mass of the pizza is the same the bigger the pizza for the same amount of dough the greater the moment of inertia <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so the moment of inertia again the moment of inertia depends on the mass and how the mass is distributed about the axes <clears throat> okay now so in this slide what we're showing you is so here is an object for a given object depending on what axis you're calculating the moment of inertia the moment of inertia will be different for the same object okay so again the moment of inertia for an object made of uh, point of uh, point particles the moment of inertia is given by mi times ri the distance of that point from the axis of rotation so let's calculate the moment of inertia of this object about this axis that object is about up right on the axis ri is zero so that's that contributes zero this guy is on the object ri is zero so that's zero this object is the mass of that is m and a is the distance so m a square m a square so the moment of inertia of this object about this axis is 2 ma squared. <clears throat> All right. So the moment of inertia of the same object about this axis. Okay, so the moment of inertia of the same object about this axis perpendicular to this plane. Now that's that's the distance of this object that's the distance of this object that's the distance of this object and so every mass contributes ma square ma square mb square ms so the moment of inertia of this object about an axis perpendicular to the plane through that act through that point is 2 ma square plus 2 mb square okay so for the same object this moment of inertia was 2 ma square and about that axis, about this axis, it was 2ma squared plus 2mb squared. 
Okay, so the point is the moment of inertia of a given object depends on the axis about which it's rotating. So an object has only one mass, but it can have an infinite number of moments of inertia depending on what axis you're calculating it about. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So um, it turns out that the moment of inertia is an uh, important thing. So for yeah. So for various objects, uh, to calculate the, the moment of inertia of a continuous object like that, what you would have to do is do this dip triple integral. So this is for a uniform density uh, um, object. But anyway, these guys are important enough where you have tables. So, so the moment of inertia for a solid cylinder about an axis passing through its central mass is given by that one half times mass of the object times r square. And uh, like I said, this, is, this quantity is important enough where you have moments of, you, you have tables giving you moments of inertia. So for a thin rod, the moment of inertia about that axis is 1 12th ml square. Uh, for a rod like that, the moment of inertia through its cylindrical axis is one half mr square. For a rod like that, the moment of inertia about its end is one third ml square. So it's four times greater than that. Okay. And for a sphere, so for the earth, the moment of inertia about the axis is two thirds mr square. Okay. And so on. Anyway, so you have these tables. For a ring, it's m by 2 r1 square plus r2 square. Okay. <clears throat> okay, somebody has a question. Yeah, on the test, we'll uh, give you a chart. I'll give you the moment of inertia that's relevant okay now here's a concept that you need to be aware of so <clears throat> what the tables will give you is the moment of inertia uh, remember uh, <clears throat> a given object can have an infinite number of moments of inertia depending on the axis about which you're rotating so a table cannot give you all the infinite number of what they give you, a, a table will give you is the moment of inertia of the object for an axis passing through the center of mass. So what if you wanted to calculate the moment of inertia about this axis? Okay. And then, so then you lean on the parallel axis theorem. <clears throat> okay, so you look up this moment of inertia, moment of inertia about the center of mass um, on a, in a table. And that would be for a regular object. You wouldn't find one for this object. But for a regularly shaped object, you can find the moment of inertia about the center of mass. And then if you wanted the moment of inertia about this axis, the moment of inertia about this axis is the moment of inertia about the center of mass axis plus the mass of the object times this distance square. Okay, So that's the parallel axis theorem. <laughs> and of course, this axis has to be parallel to that axis. Okay, so we will be using the parallel axis theorem sometimes. Okay, all right, uh, I'm going to stop this recording because.